Timber Vaughan, the overwhelmingly positively received City Builder comes survival game with a distinct lumberpunk feel receives update 5, its most ambitious update yet. In this video, I'll take you through not just what makes Timberborn tick, some tricks for starting a new game, but also this massive new bad water update. Thank you to Mechanistry for sponsoring this video. There's a link below. I'd highly encourage you to click through and check out Timberborn for yourself. Let's jump in. With the time cards below for each important section of the video, I'm going to start in the beginning. Not just the beginning of a game, but some tips and tricks and my experience with getting started in Timberborn. Now, you open up with a variety of maps, 12 in total, and they've all been reworked inside of the latest update as well. So there's something here for returning players with the bad water mechanic that we'll get to later on. Uh, the difficulty settings, highly customizable, though I'd recommend you start on easy if you're a noob. Of course, you can move through to a greater challenge if not. Once you've come to terms with the map, its size, what it looks like, and maybe some few resources like scrap metal, it's time to get started. And that's where the foundations of the city builder colony sim really come into play. For starters, we're going to need to fill some basic jobs, things like gathering food so we don't starve and chopping down trees. Because of course, we are beavers. The humans are long gone. And it's time to establish a truly beautiful lumberpunk city. But in the early stages, as I say, it's about finding those jobs chopping down trees, assigning resources to be harvested, and placing some paths. These will be fundamental and vital to allow your beavers to move around the map and explore future resources. Uh, finally, some colony sim setup wouldn't be complete without first establishing some farmland, in this case carrots, and also a few other things. You'll notice I've established some water. Not just the pump, but some storage for it as well, because survival in this game is harsh. More on that in a moment. We're also, of course, as beavers, going to want to build some dams, and I'm going to make them a high priority while I also establish an inventor. This you can think of as our science building. This will allow us to research more, unlock more, and ultimately grow our colony. The final really crucial part is that we need to make this sustainable, and to do that, we'll need to use that science, unlock a forester, and ensure we have some areas planted out with the, uh, by the way, quite wide variety of trees, each one sort of maybe maturing at a different pace or providing alternate resources like chestnuts, maple, as a couple of examples. Once we have this set up, we're nearly done establishing the basis of a self-sustaining colony, those trees being replanted and ultimately harvested. The final factor is power. I perhaps jump in a little bit too heavy in trying to set up this water mill. I could have gone with a beaver powered one instead, which might have been better early on. Nonetheless, putting that slight mistake to one side. Once I have this power established, we can start converting our early timber into planks. And now we have the basis of our colony. Here, it's crucial that I don't go too overboard. Building things like shelters or dams that I may not necessarily need until I have that self-sustaining source of lumber set up. Here I'm frantically trying to reach out to extra areas to grab the final few trees and reach so that I can become, at least early on, self-sustaining. But of course, it's not just about sustenance and survival. It's also about thriving. And this includes some of the many other things that you can do, like add aesthetic improvements or build into Timberborn's wonderful verticality. This, of course, just one extra story above the ground for a little bit of a rooftop plaza bar campsite kind of setup where the beavers can come after an 18 hour working day that I've forced upon them to just relax. That is until Timberborn throws a challenge in our face drought time, everybody, happening variably depending on your difficulty setting. And in this case, because I failed to get my dam built in time, everything is drying up. I failed to get a lake built effectively by damming it off, and my power supply, that water mill, water wheel, completely useless, obviously, with the lack of free-flowing water. Drought season is also, of course, particularly tough on our beavers, who not only need water to survive, but also to thrive, to feed their crops, grow their food. The physics that surrounds it and the way it interacts with the map here, you can see it completely drying out during drought season, because again, I failed to keep free-flowing water supply or at least a lake nearby 
is fantastic. That physics engine, the way it interacts with the game, honestly, just beautiful and really tough. Really tough. Now, the barren land, of course, can be used to build upon, and indeed, you'll see me do that throughout the course of this video, building things that don't actually need water, like storage and housing in and around it, and maybe trying to play into the verticality just a little bit more. Back out of drought season again, everything's looking wonderful, and by removing some blockages and maybe creating some of my own, I'm going to try here and actually make sure that next time we don't just survive, but we also thrive. Leading into Timberborn's slightly more technical, though nowhere near the extent of its tech tree mechanics, and using a floodgate here so that I have the option to turn this water on and off and hopefully redirect some flow towards my power supply. I'm going to need the extra power as we start getting more buildings and jobs that require it, but also I'm going to try and tame the land a little bit because we are after all a colony of beavers and building some dams with some slightly more technical floodgates around them I think is just what is needed. And as you can see, fairly easy interface to work with, potentially very dangerous outcomes. Here I'm spreading this fresh water and pushing back the polluted, contaminated and dangerous bad water. The outcome for our power supply, brilliant. Lots of extra flow, and I can continue to use terraforming, maybe block off a bit of extra water, build a nice waterfront for the beavers to relax, and the choice is ultimately mine, but by narrowing this gap a little bit, I really up the ante. Power supply, solved. Extra water storage to get through the droughts, no problem. And here, those technological challenges, and again that verticality start to play through. This quite possibly the most entirely and wholesomely useless <laughs> uh, power bridge you've ever seen. I could have of course chosen to make the beavers go over top of it. Instead, I'm going to start producing gears in a gear workshop. We'll need them in future, I figure, and it's kind of a cool point of interest. <laughs> Nonetheless, and putting that wild tangent to one side, let's get back to the task at hand. While technological progress will continue in the background, maybe changing crops, adapting to our needs, and of course managing the overall wellness and ultimately efficiency of my beaver population continues, I'd now like to talk about Update 5, and in particular, the massive feature that goes along with it, bad water. Here you're looking at two bad water sources, and I'd note, right up the top, at the highest point of elevation on my map. And you can see, as the bad water stretches along, this sort of toxic waste of human origin that mixes with fresh water, it's just devastating everything in its path, right? Dry, barren, desolate, kills plant life, contaminates beavers. And as I mentioned in the introduction, all of the maps have been reworked to include it. Now, inside of these areas, there are also some resources, though, including scrap metal, ruins that I might want in future. And the bad water itself has a variety of uses, including uh, dynamite, for example. It can be processed into an extract to cure contaminated beavers, breed adults, robots, you name it. There's all sorts of stuff that you can do with it as you move through the game. But one thing that it will consistently do, no matter which point of the game you're at, is be that source of contamination, that source of sickness. Here, what I'm trying to do, I think, you know what? I can tame it. Or at the very least, I'd like to kind of ring fence an area off so that I have some space where I can send a beaver out to forage some of this scrap metal that the humans have left behind. And to do that, I'd like to try and reduce contamination. And of course, to do that, we have to get rid of the bad water. Now, one thing that beavers do particularly well, especially in Timberborn, is build some dams. And as you can see here, I've started to successfully wall it off. And I'm careful to include a pressure valve on the right hand side where I can turn on and off the flow or reduce the flow. The big mistake that I make here is messing with mother nature though. And boy oh boy do I regret it. By turning the floodgate up to full height 1.0, I give the bad water nowhere to go. This is a huge mistake with those sources right at the top of the map and quickly adjusting the floodgate to try and mitigate the damage. It's too late. And all I can do is watch as a torrent of bad water spreads across. As you can see, it destroys every plant, every crop in its path. And as it contaminates the land, it also contaminates the beavers. They will, as we'll see in future, 
not look so hot after this unfortunate tidal wave. The good news is, of course, I had that pressure valve, so I can open it up again, let the water flow, we'll come back to the scrap metal another day, let's focus on repairing what we have. Now, the initial contamination largely goes away. The dead trees and wasted crops, some of them growing for potentially weeks, however, wasted. So when you jump in with a splash into this update 5, the bad water update, I'd highly recommend, maybe, you get yourself a little bit more advanced before you try mucking around with it. Or at least if you're going to, be a bit more careful than I. Uh, the way to do that is potentially quite expensive. However, population well-being is one of the key scores, not only to unlock the second faction, Iron Teeth, as you can see here, inside of the game, but also to generally progress and ensure that your beavers are efficient and healthy and happy. And the contamination from bad water and the surrounding areas is nasty, rendering our little dudes entirely useless except for basically running around to fetch some water. Overall, if I reflect a bit more broadly on Timberborn's Update 5 and the game at large, because of course, if you are like me, and maybe you are because this video was kind of meant for you, Timberborn may be a relatively new experience to you. My advice in Update 5 would therefore be to steer clear of bad water for as long as you can, but don't ignore it, because there's a massive ecosystem of an update that goes along with it, building on top of Timberborn's already excellent resource management, verticality, and overall survival challenge. It's not just the bad water, but also bad tides. A new season that comes through instead of a drought, where basically bad water flows from normal sources. And of course, building on top of that is the wonderful colony city builder that rightfully deserves those overwhelmingly positive reviews that it's had on Steam basically since it launched in early access and continues to receive. Not just because it is a brilliant city builder, colony builder game, but because of the way it handles survival and the way that it throws those glorious water physics at you. Combine that wonderful base layer with the fact that we now have Update 5 officially live on Steam as of the 18th of January 2024, there's now a, a sort of a dark side, a nastier side, the bad water mechanics. So it's not just about shaping the nice stuff, the free-flowing water to harness it for power and ultimately keep ourselves alive, but it's also about now handling that challenge and the disastrous contamination that comes with it. Look at these poor contaminated pink sick little beavers basically just running around to get water and food until I can desperately find a rather expensive cure for them. So if you're not sending a bad tide against yourself like I did in this video, you'll also find that they naturally occur roughly every seven cycles on easy, three cycles on hard, and the same contamination challenges will emerge, but this time from those fresh water sources. Thank you so much for watching this video on Timberborn, what it is more broadly, and also focusing in on Update 5. I think it's honestly a really fantastic City Builder Colony Sim survival game. That's why I chose to work with them on this sponsored video. So please check out the link below right at the top of the description. Click through and have a look at Timberborn with its brand new Update 5. Thanks for watching. See you next time.